Introducing WebGME, the web-based generic modeling environment. WebGME makes it possible to define your own custom visual formalism, in other words, a domain-specific graphical modeling language, and to build models using it. The software is hosted on the Amazon Cloud and is available at webgme.org. WebGME works like Google Docs in that people can collaboratively work on the same set of models. If you want to learn more about the concepts behind WebGME, read the white paper after clicking the link up here. WebGME is open source with MIT license. If you click on the GitLab, GitHub link here, it will take you to the source code. As you can see, it's quite an active project. As of June 2014, it is all for release, but we hope to have a beta version by the end of the summer. Let's go back. If you have an account, you can log in, or you can click the Try It Now, and it will take you to your own WebGME sandbox. Instead, let's log in. It remembered my credentials, that's why it took me to my own default project. Instead of looking at that, let's create new project from scratch. As you can see there are quite a few existing projects, but we are going to create a new one and we'll call it demo. Okay. What I want to do is to create a brand new modeling language uh, which is going to be a hierarchical finite state modeling language. Okay. So I just created an empty project and if I look at here, we call this the tree browser or object browser, you'll see that there are already two components here. One is the root, the other one is the FCO, which stands for first class object. The root is the root of the composition tree. There is a single composition tree in WebGME, so every uh, model or object uh, in a project is contained in this single uh, composition tree. And WebGME also supports prototypical inheritance. I'll tell you about it later. But again, there is a single inheritance hierarchy which is rooted at FCO. So an empty project consists of these two objects. Let's open the root. So here is the main uh, editing canvas, and it shows the root, and the root contains a single object, FCO. Here is what we call the part browser. It shows the available models that can be inserted into the currently open uh, model. When I actually drag in this FCO uh, into the root, what really happens is that I create a brand new instance of this FCO. Okay, so this is, FCO was the prototype and now this is a derived uh, object based on the FCO prototype. So I'm going to change its name to state. As I said, we are creating a state machine language and then the other concept I need is the state transition. These are the two objects. Now I need to define the rules that constitute this language. So I'm going to switch the view from the composition view. I'm going to go to the meta editor. Okay. It already shows again the FCO, and I need to drag in the other objects I want to use in my language specification. So I'm going to drag in these two objects. Okay, so what are the rules? We want to build a hierarchical state machine. That means that states need to be contained by other states. So actually here you can see the relations that we can uh, create. And the default one is this containment or composition. So I'm going to do this. So this specifies that states can contain other states. And this specification says that the state transitions are also contained in states. Now the only major thing missing is specifying what a transition is. A transition is an association between two states. To model that in GME, we'll use the pointer uh, type. This blue arrow specifies pointer relationships. So I'm going to say that the state transition has one pointer to states. I could create a new name for this pointer type. Instead, I use one of the built-in ones called source. And I'm going to create an, another one the built-in type destination. So what this means that state transitions will have two pointers, one called the source, the other destination, and they can point to states. There is a visualization trick which is when GME sees a 
two pointers from the same object called source and destination, it will visualize that relationship as a connection. So that is basically our meta model. So let's go back to the composition view. And now we see that we have a new object, a new model that is available for insertion into root. Okay. So let's do that. We create a new state. We created just a new instance of the state model. State transitions don't show up here because they are visualized as connections when they really have those two pointers. This one doesn't have those pointers. They are null pointers at this point. So it is shown as a box with the gray connection and label. So here is our state instance, and we can call this menu. Okay. Double click on it to open it up. Okay. Now the meta rules specify that states can contain other states. So I can create my first state machine. Okay. Let's change their names to one, two, and three. And let's create state transitions. created our very first state machine. Look at it. The connections are a little bit missing, but nothing but that's okay. So what else can we do? Well actually one thing we haven't done is specify that these connections are actually directional. So we should use an arrow to indicate the direction. So we can go back and click on this state, the tra state transition model specify a visual hint that we will actually end in y. So if we go back, we can see that we immediately end up using this y because we specified this visual attribute of the transition. And these are actually instances of the transition, so they immediately inherited the meta attribute. Another thing we should do is actually specify an empty attribute for state transitions to guard condition. Call it guard before type a string, but we could change it. In this case, string is the, what we want, and the default value should be true. Okay. One thing that we should also do is show this on the label of the connection itself. So right now, this says that the name should be shown. Instead, we will change it to the guard condition. So now, if we go back to the composition view, we'll see that have to use the guard condition shown up there, and we can actually select this and change the value to something else and fix it as true. Okay. So great. Now if I go back and change the guard condition before it was specified by here to false, okay. and now go back to my local model, we see that these are indeed changed the font that we already changed, we overrode the default value to x equals 3, that change was, uh, that remained the same. There's one more thing that we can do, let's go back to the meta and change how states look. The way to do that is actually change the, the decorator. There are a number of built-in decorators, which is not the screen unfortunately, but I pick the UML state machine decorator see that it immediately changed there, but we can go to the composition view and we can see that it actually changed uh, everywhere. And you can actually write your own decorators through an API that we uh, provide with WebGL. Now you can see that here we show the composition hierarchy in this browser, but if we click the inheritance tab, we can see that the root of the inheritance is the FCO, these are the various objects that the model of Opera created. So we, we see the manual state machine and its three children, and also the three connections, which are names of which we could have changed. And that concludes our first brief WebGL demonstration.